Hi, in this tutorial we're going to look at JJTree. JJTree is a preprocessor for Java CZ, the Java compiler compiler, and the goal of JJTree is to assist us in building abstract syntax trees. The input to JJTree will be a file with a .jjt extension. Then you run JJTree on that and it will produce a file for Java CC. Okay, we process that with Java CC and get a set of Java source files which we can compile into our desired compiler. So just again, the JJT file is an extension to Java CC okay, and it contains some additional annotations are called decorations that help us build the abstract syntax tree. This .jjt file is processed by JJTree to produce a .jj file which can be processed by Java CC to give a set of source files and these source files can be edited or additional files can be added to it in order to build our compiler. Okay, we're going to highlight the different parts of this using a simple example language. Okay, this is a language which has a series of simple statements and these statements can be expressions or declarations and the expressions will involve um, expressions in terms of integer and boolean variables. This is the JJT file the source file for Java tree tree. And like the .jj files, it has four sections, and options, a user code, tokens, and production rules. We are going to look at these four sections in a slightly different order. We look at the options section first, then the tokens, then the production rules, and finally the user code. The options has a few additional options, and the two most important ones that we'll talk about today are multi and visitor. When JJTree builds the abstract index tree, the nodes are defined as being subclasses of a type simple node. By including multi equals true, it will generate different types of nodes for different types of classes. When we add in additional decorations, as we'll see later, we can have different types of nodes. So rather than just having everything as being a simple node, we'll have an add operation node, a boolean operation node, etc. The visitor option, which is true, will add an additional code to support the visitor pattern. Again, we'll talk more about that later. There are a few additional options which we're not using in this code, and we'll mention those as we go along. The token declaration section of the JJ tree file simply defines the legal tokens, and it's pretty much the exact same as we have for Java CC, the .jj file. Okay. In this case, we're going to declare what to skip, we're going to skip white spaces, tabs, new lines, returns, and spaces, and we've declared our valid tokens, left parentheses, right parentheses. We have uh, two addition operators, plus and minus, two multiplication operators, multiply and divide, a not operator, so two boolean operators, ampersand and vertical bar, keywords int and bool, and we're going to declare a number as being one or more characters in the range 0 to 9, and an ID to be one or more characters in range of lowercase a to z and uppercase a to z, and then semicolons being the final token. The next section is the production rules. Okay, and the first rule that gets called from our user code was the program node. So the program production rule is going to produce a node of type simple node. It will be a subclass of that because we have the multi function set to true, multi equal to true. And its type will be AST program, capital AST, and then the name of this particular production rule program. We can change the prefix of the nodes by another option in the JJT file. So when the description rule is fired, it's going to call statements and then look for an end of file. And if that's successful, it will return JJT this, which is a pointer to this type of object, an AST program node, which should be a subclass of simple node. After the program node production rule is fired, it will call statements. Again, the default operation of JJTree is never a production rule is fired. It creates a new node in the abstract syntax tree of type, when multi is set to true, of AST and the name production rule. So it would produce a node of type AST STMS, except for the fact that we have added in the decoration hash void after the production rule name. This tells JJTree not to create an abstract syntax tree node at this point. The production rule is going to call simple statement, 
look for semicolon, and then option E, call statements again. If it successfully calls statements again, it will then create a AST node, an abstract census tree node, AST statements with two children. And that's what this declaration does here. Hash STMS, open bracket two, close bracket, says once you get to this point of production rule, in JJ tree, you should create a node in the abstract syntax tree of type okay, AST statements with two children. Simple statement is going to actually call expression declaration, but the key point to note is that, again, it's declared with hash void, which says that when you call this production rule, do not create a, a abstract syntax tree node of type AST, AST simple statements automatically, okay, there will be nodes created inside expression and declaration, but the default behavior of creating a node in the abstract syntax tree every time you come across a reduction rule is stopped. In fact, to save us from writing hash void in all these, we could change one of the options. There's an option which is node default void, which is set by default to false. If I set node default void to true, then all reduction rules will not generate a AS abstract syntax tree node by default unless the declaration inside production rule specifically says do it. The declaration production rule is going to try and match the keyword int or the keyword bool. Okay, and if that's one of those successful, say it matches the keyword int, it's going to call it identifier. And then it's going to set the value field of this object okay, to the image of the token. Okay, and then we're going to put into the symbol table an entry which has the key, which is the name, turned by the identifier, which is of type int and value name. And then if that's successful, it will create a node in the abstract syntax tree of type AST DLCL with one child. And similarly for bool. Okay, so this is where we actually come across declaration and we populate the symbol table. The declaration will deal with an expression. Our expression production rule, okay, will try and match a term. And the term itself, production rule is going to try and match either a not operation, in which case it'll read in a factor and create a node of type AST not underscore op in the tree. Or otherwise it'll try and match a factor followed by a multi operation, which is star or divide, in our case multiply divide by fact and another factor, in which case it'll create a node in the abstract syntax tree of type AST mult underscore op. Expression again after matches the term and creates either a not op node or a multi op node will try and match a term followed by an and op or a term and if it does okay it'll create a node in the abstract syntax tree of type AST add underscore op or if it matches a term followed by a boolean op which is ampersand or vertical bar and another term it'll create a node in the abscess abstract syntax tree of type AST pool underscore op. Finally, <clears throat> we note the two production rules, number and identifier, okay, aren't decorated by the hash void decoration. So this means that when they are fired, JJ tree will create a node in the abstract syntax tree, in the case of number, AST number, and in the case of identifier, AST identifier. This section begins with parser begin and the name of the class and ends with parser end, name of the class. And in this section, we put in the user code, which is going to, do, in this case for us, will define a hash table, which we use for our symbol table. Okay, says that the program reads in from the a file, a file stream, and then instantiates a simple node, okay, by calling the program production node inside our parser. And that's going to actually do the whole parsing for us. And when that's finished, we can print out this abstract syntax tree by using the dump method on a simple node, which simply displays the name and it's prefixed by a space. So every level of the tree will indent in one space. And then we're going to print out the symbol table okay, by simply doing an enumeration of our hash table. And then finally, we're going to run our two visitors. Okay, we'll have one visitor for pretty printing the program called the print visitor. Another visitor, we're doing a type check on the program called type check visitor. The implementation of the symbol table is going to be very, very simple. Okay, all we're going to do is store 
entries into a hash table which will have its type and its value. Okay, for a real simple table, it involves a lot more. We have to have the idea of creating scope and clearing out scope. We're not going to cover that at all here, but we have a very, very simple symbol table where we store entries into a symbol table, which we can look up later. So in this simple example, we're going to implement two visitors, as we just mentioned. The printing visitor is going to pretty print the abstract syntax tree, and then we'll have a type check visitor. And the type check visitor will go through the abstract syntax tree and check that any addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division um, only involves integer variables. It involves the Boolean variable, it's going to generate a type error. And then it'll also check that any logical conjunction, disjunction, or negation only involves either Boolean variables or Boolean values and doesn't involve integer var value or variable. Both of these visitors are implementing the interface which will be expression lang visitor. So expression XPR lang is our class and JJ tree will append on visitor and to create an interface and then every visitor must implement this interface. Here is our print visitor and as we can see it implements the XPR lang visitor and it's going to have a method for each of the decorations that we have in the .jjt file and every time we have a production rule which doesn't have a hash void decoration. So in our case we're going to have a visitor for the AST program node. Okay, we had a production rule called program in our JJT file which had no decoration on it. We had a decoration DLCL okay, and the Java tree is going to build a type ASTDECL. And similarly for ADOP, Boolean OP, and all the other ones that we've declared. And finally, for two production rules, identifier number, with, which had no decoration hash void, and we get an AST identifier node and an AST number node. Again, that prefix AST we can change by changing an option in the JJT file. Each visitor takes two parameters. Okay, the first being the type of node it's dealing with, and second, a piece of data which is cast to the generic object type object. We can specialize this if we want, okay, by setting an option in the JJT file, we can say that we're passing a particular type of data, or we can simply pass type object data and then typecast it as we require it. In this visitor, okay, when we receive a node, okay, for example, a program node, is simply going to call the visitor on its children and then print a semicolon afterwards. Okay, in the case of a declaration, okay, all it's going to do is print out the value of the node, which is its type, int or bool, and then it's going to print out the its child, which would be the identifier it's referring to. So if I declare a integer as int time, okay, the value of this node would be int and the value of his child would be the entire time. You can see a case of an add up, okay, it prints out the first child, then it prints out a space plus space. So the node value for an add up will either be plus or minus. Okay, and that's stored in the abstract syntax tree, and then we print the second child. So very straightforward. Okay, and that's our print visitor. For our type checking visitor, we're going to need to define some data types. So in a file data type type Java, we're going to declare enumeration of data types as being either program, declaration, type unknown, type integer, or type boolean. This is our type check visitor, and again it's going to implement the interface XPR Lang Visitor, which has a method for each node type. The difference between this visitor and our print visitor is that this time we're going to be passing data around. We're going to be passing the symbol table. So the object data that we pass from one module to another will actually be the symbol table, and when we need it, we'll actually have to cast it. So for example, when I'm trying to find out the type of an identifier, so when I visit an identifier, okay, I'm going to create a hash table ST, and then when I get the value of data, I'm going to cast it to the hash table and sort out an ST, and then I can do a lookup on that for a particular value, get its type, and then return back either type integer if it's of type int, 
or type boolean instead of type boo, and it's not one of those two, it will come back with type unknown. Okay. All this visitor does is when we come across a integer operation, it checks that both sides are integer. So in case of a mult operation or an add operation, it checks that both children are of data type, type integer. If it comes across a boolean operation, it checks that both are type boo. Okay. Otherwise, it returns back type unknown. And when we get a type unknown, the visitor will print out the offending line. Okay, and in order to do that, it's going to use the print visitor. Okay, so if we look at the statements SMS um, visitor, okay, it's going to instantiate its own print visitor PV, and when it gets a type unknown from a statement, it's going to say there's a type error, and then it's going to use the pretty print to print out that line of the code. So now that we have all the source file written, all we need to do is process them. So we run jj3 on expression line dot jjt. Okay, and it'll generate a set of Java files, one for each of the nodes in our abstract syntax tree, and a few additional constants and a visitor file. Okay, if you have to implement. Then we can run that through Java CC. So spr.jj. Okay, and that's going to ger generate a set of Java files for us. One of the files generated by JJ3 is the simple node.java. And we can go in and edit it and change it. For example, the dump method, which we use in our program, simply prints out the name of the node. And that's what's generated by simple node.java. If I want to change that behavior, if I want to print out not just the name of the node, but also its value, okay, I can edit the file. So what I've done here is I simply commented out the original line, which was to print the prefix. And now I'm going to print out the value if it's done not null. So I'll actually print out the name of the string, the identifier, and then the value in brackets. So now if I look at all my Java files, okay, I'll have Java files generated by JJ3, okay, things like AST add up, AST boot up, uh, simple node, and Java files that I've written for my simple table, stc.java, and for my visitors. And now all I need to do is compile them all together. So Java C star dot Java compiles them, you know, I can simply run my compiler, xpr lang on a test file, so test4.txt. Okay, and as we see when it runs, okay, first thing it does is it dumps the abstract index tree. Okay, and this is the version I've changed simple node, so it actually prints out the value of each node and indents them in by one level. Then enumerate at my symbol table. And then I call my two visitors. My first visitor does a pretty print. Okay, so in this case, I have three declarations, int a, int x, y, z, bool temp, and then four lines of code. And then I run my type check visitor on this abstract syntax tree, and it finds two problems. It finds a problem in the second expression, a star 11 minus x, y, z, divided by three plus temp, and the problem here being temp is a bool and I'm trying to add it to a number. Okay, and then it finds a problem with the fourth line, okay, not A or B and A or not C. And the problem here is that A is of type int. So that ends our little tutorial into JJ3, and I hope this has given you an idea of how JJ3 works and how we can use it in conjunction with Java CC in order to build a compiler.